First of all, in the blue corner from Tulsa, Oklahoma, weighing 120. A professional record of 25 wins, 17 losses, with 13 KOs in the white trunks. From Tulsa, please welcome Lee Cargill. In the red corner, weighing 120 pounds in the black trunks from Carmi, Illinois, a professional record of 15 wins, no losses, and one draw, Clarence Bones Adams. You can hear the fan reaction to Bones Adams. He's becoming a favorite here. He fought in Charleston March the 1st, and that was a technical draw with Tony Perez when a bad cut was opened uh, on Perez in the second round. And uh, in the first two rounds in South Carolina, if there's an accidental butt forcing or bringing about a cut and forcing the end of a fight, you go uh, call it a technical draw. After the second round, it goes to the scorecards. Well, you know, I, I, I think that's, a, in this case, in Bones Adam case, it's a bad rule because he had this guy ready to go. He's beaten everybody else. This is a blemish on his record, and I don't think there was any reason for it whatsoever. 29-year-old Lee Cargill, a late replacement. Has, uh, throughout his career, taken fights on short notice. Cargill is 29 years old. He's from Oklahoma City. He turned pro in 1983, and his last fight was in July in Oklahoma. He won a fourth-round knockout. He's had seven fights this year, and he's three and four in those seven fights. But again, he's by far the more experienced guy, Sam. Fought the tougher guys. And sometimes these veterans, when they learn how to survive the early rounds, things can get interesting. Holmes Adams has been past the first round only once in his last four fights. Cargill has been in with some very tough opponents, as Gil mentioned. He was in with Welcome Nacito, who's currently a world champion. Went the distance in South Africa against Nacita in 1987. Nacita winning a unanimous decision. Also fought Tracy Patterson in November of 1989, and Patterson took him out in the third round. Good exchange. Adams got in the right hand. Cargill mixed it up pretty well. Big ring here in South Carolina. Holmes Adams had a fine amateur career, but said he got tired of the amateurs. Well, I wonder how long it's going to be if he keeps fighting this many fights in a short space of time before he gets tired of the pros. Well, I think Gill, in talking to Bones and to talking to his father, who manages him, nice work with the jab by Adams. The feeling is if he starts to have tougher fights, then they'll start to spread out the distance between bouts. But as long as the fights are lasting only one or two rounds, there's no reason why not to get, why not getting back right away into the ring. Mike Tyson did that early in his well, career. Well, except that he, no matter how, you don't know that the fight's going to be easy before the fight. And you have to train just as strenuously no matter who you're fighting. At least if you have a good trainer, you should. You should never go into that ring unless you're in condition. So therefore, this kid is in constant training. Everybody needs a blow once in a while, Sam. You should know about that. <laughs> good work by Adams. And now Cargill coming back. Adams worked well to the body with Cargill against the ropes. Triples up with the left hand. Adams has good tools, Gil. He certainly does. He throws all the combinations, no question about that. Clancy, live at the King Street Palace in Charleston, South Carolina. This is round two, scheduled for 10. Clarence Bones Adams in the black trunks. Lee Cargill in the white. In his last fight in Kansas City, Missouri, Bones Adams won what is called the Midwest Bantamweight title. He won a one-round knockout, stopped Nelson Garcia, and he has a big following in Kansas City, Missouri. In fact, John Chizik, who uh, owns a Honda dealership there, rented a nightclub and a satellite dish to show the fight to several hundred fans tonight.
Do you think that John also invented that title, Sam? What's that? Oh, could have. <laughs> I mean, that's like being the, the champion of 104th Street in Manhattan. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a pretty good title. Matter of fact, I bet on the guy from 104th Street. <laughs> You notice the cargo is making some real veteran moves in here. He just isn't always moving the one way, moving to the left, moving to the right. Just throwing bones a little bit off of his usual timing. That's that's the, the guy with all the experience, the fact that he can move around, go side to side. He'll pick his spots to counter punch. Straight right hand, a good one by Adams, and he moves in right behind it. Adams banging the body effectively. Adams was originally scheduled to fight Roland Gomez of Texas. Gomez dropped out. And Adams was going to fight Lee Cargill three weeks from now. And Cargill stepped in and said, okay, I'll fight him now. And here they are. A guy like Cargill, credit. He's 29 years of age. He must be in some kind of condition to be in the fight. Which means, despite the fact that he has all those losses, he still hasn't been discouraged. Sam, he's still there. Still looks like a pretty good fighter. Gary Hitopoulos, the referee, moving in. This is a good learning experience. Bones Adams. He's not having everything his own his own way in there, Sam. He has to set the guy up. But uh, what I impressed with Gil is that. He has tremendous poise, and he's going about his business. He's not looking for a quick knockout or to end it in a hurry. He's just working very well. Oh, he just suddenly has all the poise that is necessary. 17 years old, it's like unbelievable. And fighting 10 rounds already, Sam. Well, this is his what does he do first scheduled 10 rounder. For an encore, you fight title fights. Time winding down in round two. Round three of the scheduled ten rounder. How have you scored the first two rounds, Gil? Oh, the Bones Adams definitely won the first two rounds. Scoring done on a ten-point must system here in South Carolina. Three judges at ringside to the scoring. Ten points to the winner of a round. Nine or fewer to a loser. There is a standing eight count. In effect, no three knockdown rule in effect. Fighter can only be saved by the bell in the last round. Adams working over Cargo. And again, throwing those beautiful sharp combinations, Sam. Puts both hands together very, very well. And then again, you just see, he just doesn't go wild. Sets the guy up, faints, snaps the jab out there. I get the feeling that Cargill is waiting for Adams to make a mistake, but Adams isn't making many. That's right. You figure the youth and the exuberance, they let himself walk wide open once in a while, but he just isn't doing that. Again, very, very poised in that ring. With both hands and the uppercut scores. Adams turned pro in April of 1990 before he was 16 years old. And Sam, the biggest improvement that I've seen in Bones Adams uh, since we start, first started to put him on the air is his defense. He used to get hit with a lot more punches than he's getting hit with now. And the offense is still sharp. He's not giving anything up to get better defense. hands by Adams. Cargill trying to tie him up and does. Well, that's that experience, Sam. Adams' older brother just retired from boxing. Brother Fred, who really got bones started in boxing. I guess Fred's an old man. How old is Fred? Fred's in his 20s. He retired with an 18-4 and one record. Well, that's nothing to be ashamed of. No. 
Jones Adams in control. Cargill on the defensive. That quick uppercut has worked well for Adams. End of round three. Here we see an example of those beautiful combinations of Bones Adams. Goes to the body, goes to the head, uses both hands. This is round four. Scheduled for ten. Bones Adams clearly in control against the older, more experienced Lee Cargill. Cargill pulling Adams back to the ropes and Harry Hitopoulos cautions him for pushing. Cargill to get into this fight is going to have to mount a little bit more of an offense and now he's just trying to stay. Inside, Adams has a hand free and he constantly bangs with it. Cargill got caught coming in with, by a left hook by Bones Adams. There's that side to side movement of Cargill again. That's what's keeping him in this fight and keeping him upright. Holmes switching to southpaw for a moment. And once again, Cargill forces him back to the ropes. Time has been called. Harry Hitopoulos is going to take away a point. Harry Hitopoulos is the head of the boxing commission and he takes no guff. He lets the fighters know exactly what he expects of them. Well, let's see if this affects Cargill's performance as well. Will he fight a little more now, or will he continue to hold? Cargill perhaps sensing that uh, Adams has much too much for him. And you know, Cargill is not getting set to punch at all, not saying. Just moving away, trying to stay out of harm's way. And it looks like he is trying to rough up Adams. Well, it looks like he's trying to get disqualified. Oh, That's yeah. what it looks like. Okay. And he's been cautioned twice by Harry Hitopoulos about pulling Adams down, pushing his head down. not fighting at all right here. Adams gets his hands free, starts banging away. No offense whatsoever from Cargill. That uppercut grazed the chin of Lee Cargill. Cargill continues to back off, try to stay away from Bones Adams. for 10 and Bones Adams lead over Lee Cargill continues to widen the last round would be a two-point round because Cargill lost the point and that's absolutely correct in the meanwhile they tried to give Cargill a little bit of a pep talk between rounds let's see if it has any effect thus far it is good start to the round for Cargill Adams trying to turn it around You know, Sam, a lot of times, the first time you go 10 rounds, it's, it's a psych it has a psychological effect on you if you've never done it, no matter how good a fight you are. I remember the first time I put Emil Griffith in a 10-round fight. He just wasn't performing the way I thought he could and the way I knew he could. And after the fight, he said, yes, I was worried about going to 10. Now, but it just doesn't seem to be that way with uh, Bones Adams. He's letting it all hang out, throwing those combinations. Well, Adams said his goal in the gym has been to prepare for 10 rounds. That's what he's been working on, his stamina. And this is round five. Only the fourth time in his pro career he's been this distance. He's never been more than six rounds in a fight. And he's gone six only twice before. All right, break it up. Break. But it looks like, to a degree, Adams is pacing himself. He hasn't really opened up 
trying to put Cargill away. Well, yeah, he's being very, very cool in there. Put me on him. Come on, let's go. Picking Cargill apart, not going wild. And again, this is going to be a very beneficial fight for Bones Adams. He's in with a guy that just doesn't lay down when he gets hit. A little cute. And he's solving every problem that's put in front of him. Again, Cargill tying up Adams. Now you say tying up. Harry Hitzopoulos says hold him. <laughs> what he says probably counts more than what I say. I would have to. I, I imagine so. Especially when he puts that one finger up <laughs> the way he did last round. Again, it's up to Carver to stand his ground a little bit and get set to throw some punches. In the first two rounds, it looked like Cargo was here to make a fight of it. Now, Cargo has become very defensive and not willing to mix it up much at all. Adams landing brings the crowd alive. Big right hand by Cargo in that exchange, too. Sam was probably Cargo's best punch of the fight. But it had no effect on Adams whatsoever. End of the fifth round. And Bones Adams sits down and his father right in front of him. Good deep breaths, okay? Reggie, uh, put some water on his head in the back part. Okay. All right? How you feel? Good. You're looking good, baby. You're looking time work. Perfect, huh? Time work, Bones. Time work, baby. Keep time work. Off of that chair. Time work now. Okay. Time Keep work. Working off. Second round. Across the way, a weary Lee Cargill up off the stool. Out for round six. They were talking to Bones Adams like it's a close fight. Time to work. I mean, I think he's doing an excellent job up to this point. And that just saw a good example of what Gil mentioned earlier, the defense. He picked off a couple of jabs with that right hand very well. Come on, come on, come on. Bones Adams started boxing when he was five years old in Henderson, Kentucky, where he grew up. And the family moved to Detroit when brother Fred turned pro. And now they make their home in Carmi, Illinois. Oh, oh, oh. got a little careless that last time with a slow right hand, Joe. Well, Sammy has so little opposition in front of him that you're inclined to do things like that. He has to keep his concentration. Has to bear down, and it's not easy when you're having everything your own way. The thing I like is he is setting up his combinations. And working the body again. Cargo stops the action. And now you see Cargo never sets himself to punch. Never set the punch. He's only set to get out of there and as quickly as possible. Not looking to punch at all. Good combination once again by Adams. Keeps moving away from Adams, trying to stay out of trouble. But again, never setting himself to give it a good left to all. Oh, solid. And he got in a right hand underneath as well. Cargo wearing down. Adams at a steady pace. 
dominating things late in the sixth round. Cargill using all of the ring. You know, Sam, do you think you could stop something like this? I mean, Cargill really isn't taking that much punishment, but he's not in the fight at all. Well, I think uh, every round. One, one stern warning from the referee to say, listen, you've got a fighter, I'm going to stop it. Probably could do that. Hey, hey. Bell ending round six. Hey. Round seven. Normally I would uh, check Gill's scorecard, but I know what it says already. And I think the fans watching know what it says also, Gill. You know, and Sam, you, you left out one thing. You say the referee could stop and warn Coggle to start fighting or he's just going to stop the fight. If he said, if you don't start fighting, you're not getting paid. That's a very, that's professional boxing. That's the word that wakes these guys up sometimes. Sounds like you'd like to do that once in a while. Adams moving in, working underneath and landing. And once again, Cargo holding, and here comes a point off. One for him. Another point taken off for holding. The outcome is not in doubt here, unless Lee Cargo starts to mix it up, and unless he finds something, some lucky punch. But he seems to be unwilling to fight anymore. Sam, he's not even trying to throw a lucky punch or a big punch. He's never set to throw a punch. This is the farthest Bones Adams has been in any fight in his pro career, the seventh round. And he seems to be just as fresh as when the fight began. And even though in the last couple of rounds, Cargill has kept on moving and trying to stay out of range, Adams has been very, very steady. And under control, hasn't gotten wild at all. He certainly hasn't. You know, the last boxer that I remember that was this efficient at this age was Alexis Aguayo. Well, that's some comparison. Well, Adams looks, he looks right now just about as good as Aguayo looked at that early age. And Cargill not throwing anything. Uppercut started it. Adams tries to put an end to the proceedings. That may be the difference between a young Adams and a young Aguayo. If Aguayo hit you with that straight right hand, you were going to go. Bones has landed a lot of punches, and he really has never had Cargill in serious trouble in the entire fight. Winding down in the seventh round. <laughs> Sam Rosen and Gil Clancy ringside here at the King Street Palace in Charleston, South Carolina. Unbeaten bantamweight Clarence Bones Adams, 17 years old, 15-0-1. One draw, a technical draw, stopped after two rounds when his opponent was cut due to an accidental butt. And Adams closing in on yet another victory as this is a lopsided matchup. Lee Cargill in the white trunks after the first two rounds has offered very little resistance and very little opposition. He's been doing a lot of holding, has Cargill. Occasionally is trying to rough up the younger Adams. Sam has even stopped that. He's really been put in his place. Right now, I don't think he wants to get Bones Adams angry at all. He's content. Just let those minutes go by. Good right hand landing by Bones Adams. Follows it up with a flurry. And Cargo trying to stop Adams from punching. Can't do it. Adams keeps throwing and landing the uppercut again. Good 
work by Adams. He refused to let himself get tied up. All right now, Sam, uh, do we have to start questioning? Hey, now he, Adams is now fighting Southpaw. This kid has talent coming out of his toes. <laughs> he can do it all. But Sam, I think we have to start thinking about his punching power right now because he's landed a lot of solid punches. And again, Cargill is still there and should not showing any signs of being in serious trouble. I'm going to go back to something you touched on earlier. I think Adams is concentrating on going the distance here, Gil. And, uh, and not he, thinking about taking him out. I think he's thinking about going 10 rounds. Well, he is in, in complete control of himself as well as the fight. No question about that. But even then, by accident, if you have those heavy hands, if you hit a guy, something's going to happen. He's going to start doing funny tricks. And it just hasn't happened in this fight. Good body shots. And Cargill is picking some of those off with his elbows, Sam. Again, that's the, the survivor instinct in, in a Cargill. He's trying to survive, which is the toughest kind of guy to get out of there. Most of the time, if you get a guy out, it's because you beat him to the punch. But he's not throwing any punches that Bones Adams can beat him to. Adams working on finding an opening. He's found several. And time has stopped. Uh, it looks like tape has come off the glove of Bones Adams. Time has been stopped late in the round. So careful right now. You take care of it in the corner. Bones Adams fighting for the fourth time in South Carolina. Third time in Charleston. Fought in Greenville early in July. And has become a favorite. Around here. And the end of the eighth round. All tens for Bones Adams on our scorecard. Said you have to fight this kid, but we haven't seen that at all from Mr. Cargo. Pulling a few punches here to start the ninth round. No knockdowns in this fight. Adams well ahead. Cargo has lost a couple of points. Holding. Nice right hand lead. Scores for Bones Adams. Uh, and there's what you were talking about. He stayed under complete control. He didn't jump on Cargill after landing that good solid punch. He wants to go those 10 rounds. I think that's a stepping off point for him. It's a uh, reached the stage here in his 17th pro fight in less than a year and a half as a pro and I think he needs to prove to himself he can go this distance. That's exactly right Sam it's a psychological barrier to get over and uh, I, I think that he's doing a very very good job of pacing himself and still throwing enough punches to win every single round. Taking the lead throughout. Total control of the fight, dictating everything. And has never been in trouble. He showed me every single punch in the book. There isn't a punch that this kid can't throw and throw correctly. They're all short, most of them on the mark. And again, his defense has improved so much. Once again, Cargill on the move. 
29 year old Lee Cargill who turned pro in 1983. And now has turned into the trial horse. The proverbial opponent. But you see what happens when he does try to punch with, with Bones Adams. He gets beaten. That's the most punishment that Cargill's taken in a few rounds because he tried to open up himself a little bit. That's why he's strictly defensive. Looking for the opening, finding it, landing some punches, and then stepping back. It doesn't waste much energy. End of round nine. Here you can see this big right hand by Bones Adams, and again, he brings himself right back, perfect position, doesn't go wild. Just in complete control of himself and the fight. Tenth and final round. There have been no knockdowns. Bones Adams clearly in front. The Cargill has put on very little offense. Rounds one and two. He was willing to mix it up. After that, it's been all Bones Adams as he looks for his 16th win in 17 fights. The only blemish, that technical draw that we mentioned that was here in uh, South Carolina it was in Charleston March the 1st where he had his opponent Tony Perez in trouble but an accidental butt opening up a uh, serious cut forced the stoppage of the fight in the two rounds it's ruled a technical draw Adams well on his way to big things just 17 years old that's the incredible thing he just turned 17 last month and he is fighting 10 rounders and he's maturing every single fight he looks very good i wonder what kind of fighter it will take to give adams problems sam i mean he seems to have an answer for everything he's got those fast hands Close combinations. I mean, is this going to be a tall cutie or a southpaw? Who can give this kid a problem? I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when Adams is hit. I don't think we've seen him get hit real hard by a quality opponent. You know, occasionally, as you mentioned earlier in, in his fights, he would get hit a few shots. But I think uh, when he fights a quality opponent who's a good puncher, that will uh, really put him to the test. And if he passes that, Sam, that's it. Then he should go. And he's got, he looks to have all the tools. He's worked the body well. He's worked inside well. There he got pinned by Cargill. And he has now proven he can go the distance. Again, there's another big plus, the 10 rounds. No matter who you're in there with, Sam, doesn't look a bit fatigued. Looks like he can go another 10. For Lee Cargill, this will be another short notice fight that will end up in the losing column. That's it. Looks like a shutout for Bones Adams. And Dad just came into the ring with his chest sticking out, and I don't blame him. A big smile. He knows his son passed another test. Solid performance for Bones Adams, pleasing the good crowd here at the King Street Palace, which has adopted him as one of their favorites. Awaiting the announcement of the decision, a mere formality at this point. Don't forget our main event, scheduled 10 round lightweight bout, Daryl Tyson, ranked number three in the world. We'll take on Lupe Suarez, former junior welterweight, junior lightweight contender. 
Suarez having fought twice for the Junior Lightweight Championship. Cards have been collected, and we'll get the official announcement from ring announcer Mark Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. The judges scored 188, 187, 186. The winner and still unbeaten in the red corner, Clarence Bones Adams. A lopsided victory for Clarence Bones Adams. He goes the 10 round distance for the first time in his pro career. First time he's been forced to go the distance in his last seven fights. But a satisfying victory and a dominant performance for Bones Adams as he defeats Lee Cargill. Back with more fight night action in just a moment. Palace. We are getting set for welterweight action. And let's get the introductions to our next bout from ring announcer Mark Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout is set for four rounds welterweight. Your referee is Brian Stutz, first in the blue corner from Columbia, South Carolina, with a professional record of five and three. Two of those wins coming by knockout. He weighed in at 147. Say hello to Linnell Stroman. His opponent in the red corner, undefeated, 4 and 0. Three of those wins by knockout. He weighed in at 149 and a half. Say hello to Darrell Coley. There he is, the screen opened, and here comes Darrell Coley. They plan everything, Sam, even the entrance. You, not me. Coley is 3-0. and He is 21 years old, from Washington, D.C. Stands 5'11". Unbeaten, wearing the American flag trunks. And came in uh, with sunglasses, too. The last fight that I saw come in with sunglasses got knocked out in one round, uh -oh. and that was... That was Roger Mayweather. Here is Darrell Coley. <laughs> Linnell Stroman in the red trunks is 28 years old, born in Brooklyn, New York, raised in Columbia, South Carolina. He stands 5'9. Both weighing in at 147. coming down with Daryl Tyson, also from Washington, D.C., where they work together. Sam, if he can fight as flashy as those trunks, mm. we're going to see a good fighter. They have to be handmade trunks, Sam. There's no way anybody could manufacture them. <laughs> Good trunks. He's got the uh, real nice shoes with the tassels. One red shoe, one blue shoe. He's decked out the man from our nation's capital, Darrell Coley, unbeaten. As a pro, he's 3-0. Quick left hook by Coley. And updated his record.